We are at Asakusa. It's a Saturday and the crowd is insane. This is the entrance of Sensoji Temple, the oldest temple in Tokyo, also an ancient Buddhist temple built in the year 645, I believe. And as you step through the Thunder Gate, I think it's called Kaminarimon. You arrive at a shopping street of about 200 meters in length called Nakamise. On this street, you see all sorts of souvenirs being sold, interesting items being sold, a lot of different types of foods that you can try. And after that, you arrive at the main hall of Sensoji Temple, right past the Hozomon Gate, where you see a few other halls as well and its famous five-story pagoda. You see lots of fortune telling, a lot of people wearing kimono, taking beautiful pictures, eating all sorts of foods as well. And I think there is also a food festival going on right now. So there's like lots of different types of food for you to try. Anyway, today what we're going to do is we're going to eat around Sensoji Temple. We're going to eat on the main street. We have tried the foods here a few years back. They are generally decent, but it did feel a little, if I may, touristy. So we're going to explore the other streets to try out different types of foods, mainly street snacks. And what better than to start with a traditional Japanese hand molded rice ball, the onigiri. Hey guys, here we are right in front of the oldest onigiri store in Tokyo. Serving fresh onigiri since 1954. The store is called Onigiri Asakusa Yodoroku and it's held by third generation Yosuke Miura faithfully reproducing onigiris through the recipes handed down from his grandmother. Now, I've checked with the chef whether we can film and the chef is not particularly keen on videos being taken. He says photos are allowed. However, I really want to share this experience with you guys. So we're going to try to ask them whether we can take out. In fact, as you can see, Quad is asking the person whether we can do it by way of takeout. So let's hope we can take it out and show it to you guys while it's fresh and warm. Alright guys, here is the takeout. Onigiri <laughs> and we literally just walk behind the shop and there's this curb here on the side so we're seated here and I like how they package this this is very nice two individual onigiris of different flavors placed in a plastic container and the seaweed most importantly the nori is separately placed so I'm gonna assemble my onigiri now Ooh, basically these two are the different flavors you got this is the ikora which is a salmon or trout oh the white rice is still warm and this is shiitake with kombu marinated in soy sauce i'm gonna take out my ikura oh it's really warm oh it's so warm okay, okay. <laughs> this is going to be a little messy i'm gonna put the other onigiri on the side and let me open up this seaweed very quickly oh it smells really nice okay seaweed out Hey, wait, I should... Okay, let, let's take the seaweed out first. Okay, <laughs> place it on this plastic. Oh, the ikura. Oh, it's falling off. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do my best. Perhaps this is a DIY onigiri now. Okay, um... Uh, okay, okay. Oh, no, it's not in the middle. Okay, let me try to place it in the middle. There we go. Beautiful onigiri. <laughs> ikura onigiri. Oh, this is brilliant. Separating the seaweed. Nice! Okay, I'm ready to begin. See where is Chris. Let's go. Mm. Oh! Nori! It's crisp. It's really fragrant. They call it Edomai Nori, which is very rich in the seaweed flavor. Mm. Very umami. The ikura within. It pops in your mouth because it's marinated in soy sauce, so you could taste the saltiness, the umami of the soy sauce. The rice is warm, it's light, it's fluffy, and I notice the rice is packed very lightly. It's similar to a very well packed sushi rice where it's light and airy and it's not too tightly packed together, they don't mush the rice together. Mm. A very simple meal. And the nori. Oh, well, you gotta eat this really quick because. The nori is getting soggy now. Note of the warmth of the rice. My turn. Shitake kombu.
because it's thicker in soy sauce so you can taste the umami from the soy sauce the saltiness with the sweetness is very well balanced and good pair with the white rice Mm. The texture of combo is very light chew with a nice nut. A very simple and delightful onigiri. Mm. That's some rather enjoyable onigiris. Anyway, I think now it's time for us to go and grab another snack because onigiri is considered like a main meal, I guess it's breakfast, or in this case, brunch. Let's grab a oh, oh, it smells melon fun. <laughs> smells really good. Anyway, we're not getting melon fun. We're gonna go to this wagashi store. Wagashi means traditional Japanese confectioneries. It's called Momotaro, and they've been selling wagashi for more than 150 years. They are very well known for their dango, which is like a small skewered sweet rice ball, like a kind of like a mochi. I got my dango now. Actually, we are standing opposite of the shop. And what I got is a yaki shoyu dango, which is a grilled shoyu dango. Also my first salty base dango. Mmm, it has a very strong new fragrance. Mm. The texture is moderate chewy, quite sticky. It sticks on your tooth. And the flavour is very salty. The shoyu flavour is very salty and there's some bitterness from the burn spot mm -hmm. texture isn't the best uh, I'll be honest yeah very salty and bitter burnt or oh, very salty <laughs> alright on to the next spot Alright, from one savoury snack to another, we are going to have some... What's that called? Menji! <laughs> we are going to have some menji uh, at this shop called Asakusa Menji. Menji is basically like a minced pork and minced beef croquette in a way. I think they have been around for a really long time and there should be a really long queue. We are going to try out one and hopefully it performs better than the dango. The dango isn't very good. Alright guys, got my menji. Oh, it smells of beef. The beefiness is rather strong here. You can see it's got a nice crisp batter. Breaded. Like this, it's quite oily actually. The oil is really beginning to sip up. It's really hot. So let's quickly take a bite. Mm -hmm. Very crisp batter. Very crisp. Flavor of onions. Onions are very sweet. It's rather beefy. I know it's a mix of beef and pork. I think that's where the fattiness comes from. There's a nice fattiness within. Mm. It's a pretty enjoyable snack for me. Because personally, I like onions. There are lots of onions in there. The sweetness of the onions is the main play here, together with the beefiness. But it's really very, very oily. It's definitely overly oily, let's put it that way. It will be better if it's less oily. But nonetheless, an enjoyable street snack. And the queue is rather quick too. So if you're around here, I guess you can try it. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Mm. Guys, <laughs> after the Menchi originally, we were planning to have some gelato at this place called Suzuki and Asakusa. But we just found out that it's temporarily closed. <laughs> So now we gotta find something else. We are looking for something sweet to eat because the earlier menchi was really oily. La. It doesn't taste very good on the palate and the throat after a while. Oh! Now that washes all the oiliness down. We can finally talk. Mm. Alright, guys, I wanna apologize. I know we might have eaten too little stuff. But we were scouting the place and nothing really caught our eye. So we decided to go with a cup of Gong Cha. It's pretty decent. <laughs> a bit expensive. Mm. Let's start our playing time segment. Alright, let's talk about the first spot. Onigiri Asakusa Yodoroku. Mm. I think this is probably the best food we have had today. Yep. Yeah, by, by far. 
definitely good quality ingredients. Rice is bouncy, fluffy, and individually grained. Fillings are also well marinated with a decent flavor balance. Add on that robust, crisp nori, it creates a really heartwarming rice ball. Sort of like what a mother would have made at the moment. I'm also impressed by the chef lightly packing the rice so the onigiri is not too dense, sort of like how a sushi master would have packed his sushi rice. The packaging as well is really impressive. I like the way they package it so that even though you are on the go, you still get to enjoy crisp nori onigiri by way of takeout. That is really nice. Now, with that said, I do find that the onigiri lacks some form of excitement. The fillings, despite having a good flavor balance, lack certain flavor depth and layers. The rice as well, it lacks a sort of fragrance that really good rice would have. All in all, it's a really simple onigiri that is done very, very well. And I really think it's a feat on its own because onigiri is a really simple food. So it's really difficult to make it very, very delicious and tasty. And with that being said, this spot scores an okay on the gourmet plate, which means it is some good quality onigiri right there. I would say if you are in the Asakusa area, I would recommend you to try them out. If you are an onigiri lover, you will most definitely enjoy it. However, if you have never fancied onigiri, it might not excite you as much. Also, if you have decided to try them out, do dine in because onigiri must be eaten very quickly. The nori gets soggy real quick. Okay, on to the second spot, Momotaro's <laughs> Shoyu Dango. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's okay lah. Right. It's alright. Right. It's... Yep. It doesn't reflect what a 150-year Wagashi shop would have made. I know it sounds really harsh. Maybe they are inconsistent. I don't know, maybe it's their off day today. But the texture is not very good. Mm -hmm. And the flavor is very salty. Yeah, me. it's very, very salty and mm -hmm. very bitter. I understand that this kind of dango would have a burnt flavor and fragrance, but when it's so burnt and so salty, it's just not very good. And yeah. it also lacks the dango's natural rice flavor. Mm -hmm. That fragrance of very good dango's, yeah. it doesn't have that. So, unfortunately for the dango itself, Momotaro scores a zero on the gourmet plate. You know, if you are here, you have not had dango before. <laughs> you want to try a really old shop, you can. But I probably won't visit them again. And the last one, Asakusa Menchi. A very oily Menchi. <laughs> <laughs> Super oily Menchi. Okay, let's talk about the positive side of this thing first. Good crisp batter. Flavors are actually quite decent. Yeah. It's very beefy. I couldn't really taste the porkiness. Mm. Onion sweetness is nice. If you like onions, you will enjoy it more. But ultimately, it's the oiliness that really kills it for us. Mm. The moment it hits your palate, it's just oil. It's not juices. Yep. It's lots of oil. And you feel very bogged down after two or three bites. And you also feel like as though it's really heaty. Chinese, we call it heat hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it really bogs you down. So, unfortunately, again, I think it's called a zero. It, is a, it actually borders between a zero and an honorable mention. But I think we'll lean towards zero. I think, yeah, it's called a zero on the community because it's really way too oily and way too heavy. Pretty icky. Luckily, we've got Kongsa to wash it down. If you are in Asakusa, it's definitely a very famous shop. A lot of people queue up to try it out. I mean, you can try it out. Uh, yeah. So, I guess there you have it. A relatively quick trial of certain foods in Asakusa area, Sensoji area. Once again, I really apologize. First of all, based on our very personal limited research, we really couldn't find anything else that we wanted to try. But fellow Japanese or people who are really familiar with Asakusa area, let us know in the comments down below what are the great foods that you want us to try. We'll definitely come back because, I mean, we come to Tokyo quite often to be honest. Yeah, so we'll definitely come back and try other foods that we haven't tried yet. Let us know in the comments down below. Yep. I guess that's it. Yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Next week, we're eating again in Tokyo. So I will see you then. Yeah. Bye.